The last Circle of Excellence Award recipient is diabetes educator Nancy Jentz from Ministries Howard Young Medical Center in Woodruff. It's not a story of reworking complex processes to create a new type of healthcare delivery model or a story of intensive and multifaceted training. It's a simple yet powerful story of two women, one who needed help, more help than ministry was able to provide, and another who found a way to deliver it. I mean, once a physician diagnoses a patient with diabetes, uh, they're looking for a resource person to help work one-on-one -on -one with their patients. And so the physicians are relying on nurses like Nancy to partner with the patients. In this situation, that partnership went beyond simply helping to educate the patient. When I was eight years old, that's when we were told I was a diabetic. An individual with type 1 diabetes does not make any insulin and they need to take insulin injections to control that high blood sugar. When I turned about 21, then my blood sugars started taking drastic drops. I was immediately struck by how difficult her diabetes appeared to be to control. And I could be as low as 20 and have no idea that my blood sugar was that low. At 20, you can pass out and have seizures. So driving a car certainly was problematic. The first time I actually ended up putting my car through a building, my blood sugar at that time was down to 10. She's a young, active woman who very much enjoys exercise wanted to walk um, her dog, wanted to go out snowshoeing in the winter, wanted to go cross-country skiing and biking. All of those activities became very difficult to do because she could not be alone, she could not be away from assistance of other people if she would suffer seizures. It's just a fear that no one should have to feel and to have to feel that because you don't know what your own body is doing to you is horrible. After two and a half years of working very closely with her, um, I realized that she was beyond my capabilities to fix. I uh, did some research and uh, found out about the islet cell transplant program through the University of Minnesota. It was a weekend. Nancy called me and said they were doing a research project with diabetics who are hypo-unaware, which means you can't feel your reactions. We sat at my desk together, we accessed the online information, went through the application process. It was a lot of paperwork, but through the paperwork, I found out I was able to be in the program. Although all of the medical expenses were paid for, this would be a big financial burden for her to have the time off work and um, the other expenses associated with traveling back and forth to University of Minnesota. It seriously had me doubting that I would be able to afford to have the transplant and I pushed her to move forward on this opportunity and assured her that we would find her the small amount of money that um, she was gonna need to pursue this opportunity. And we supported Nancy in her endeavors to seek that funding as it made sense from the Catholic values that we're called upon each and every day. Chaplain Iverson um, very graciously agreed to be an overseer on the account. She came to me looking for help uh, with raising some money and putting this together to help Lisa out. I contacted 27 Lions Clubs and Lioness Clubs in our area by letter and told them a little bit about Lisa and asked uh, for their club to consider a donation. And they were able to raise money for me. The Lions Clubs were tremendous in their giving and their donating. Uh, $5,000 was raised for uh, her expenses for this transplant. I spent about a year on the transplant waiting list. Lisa got uh, her initial call that a, a donor pancreas was available, I believe in December of 2009. I was actually over the weight restriction and so I wasn't able to have my transplant at that time. Lisa had a very difficult time. As you can imagine, with low blood sugars, she was always having to eat candy, drink soda, eat sugar to bring that up. I met with Mary Sakura. Nancy and I definitely work 
together as a team. I focus more on the nutrition and the eating. She was able to help me come up with a diet plan to take about 10 pounds off. She did receive a call in January that another donor pancreas was available and she left immediately. I received on January 24th of 2010 my islet cell transplant. University of Minnesota says that I can consider myself cured from my diabetes. She can live like everybody else, exercise without fear, uh, drive a car without fear, and is making plans to uh, pursue her, her life, possibly get married. My life is completely mine again, and it's great. Nancy's behaviors um, really fulfill ministry's promise to their patients. Well, Nancy definitely follows the mission of ministry. Furthering the healing ministry of Jesus by continually improving the health and well-being of all people, especially the poor, in the communities we serve. When we told her that she'd won this award, she was flabbergasted. She, the first thing that she said was, why? I was just doing my job. Isn't this what we're supposed to do? When examined up close, these individuals and small teams may seem separate and unrelated, but they are all part of the diverse mosaic that is ministry health care. Each of us is an integral part. If you ever doubt your importance, step back, broaden your perspective, and see how our unique pattern can be affected by a single piece, and how beautiful it can become with all of us working together.